Ensuring proper reconstruction is one of the many complicated tasks that Ukraine will face and is already facing now. But in what ways should Kyiv manage it? Ukraine's public officials keep talking about reconstruction at many international and domestic conferences and public discussions. And today we will talk about how this can be done through several specific cases. The Solutions from Ukraine podcast is brought to you by the Rubrica Media Outlet. My name is Vladislav Faraponov, I am the co-host of this podcast. And before we start, let me remind you that you can support us at Patreon, at patreon.com slash rubrica. After you join us at Patreon, you'll be able to send us questions that we address in the podcast, and you can also get uh, our exclusive merch with Solutions and uh, the Ukrainian map. So let me introduce uh, Anastasia Rudenko, my co-host and Rubrica's uh, chief editor. Hello, Vlad, and hello, our listeners. Yes, today we will talk about quite interesting cases. I'm talking about using 3D models in the restoration process. But uh, let's talk about the history of that question first. So, uh, Vlad, what is uh, 3D printing and how should we use it? Well, uh, 3D modeling, uh, it actually makes uh, possible kind of not only to preserve the historical and and cultural heritage, but it it can also help restore uh, basically what has been destroyed. And and today we'll talk about the cases uh, of um, implementing uh, this uh, this model. And... um, Architects uh, have already started, uh, um, like moving it to to the digital sphere. Uh, the most uh, the most valuable buildings, the most uh, important, the oldest buildings, uh, and um, the Ukrainian uh, specialists are doing it too. And uh, kind of the reason is simple: uh, is uh, it it is one of the ways that uh, also they can uh, restore the destroyed uh, or damaged uh, building and um, and frankly speaking long before the uh, start of the full scale invasion uh, in february last year 3d scanning was applied in anticipation of the risks uh, uh, basically posed by different Disasters like fire, flood, or damage to to buildings. Uh, and again, in uh, 2015, uh, before the Notre Dame blaze at uh, at uh, the Cathedral of uh, of Notre Dame in France, uh, architect created a 3D model. So basically, when it came time for the rebuilding, uh, basically they could. Uh, correctly um, implement uh, this model and uh, kind of replicate the um, intricate elements uh, that were lost uh, in in the fire. And uh, of course, there are some people in Ukraine uh, who are interested in uh, developing a similar model uh, to preserve uh, the the historical and cultural cultural heritage. Yes, so understood. Creating a 3D model requires great efforts, like uh, technical specialists place markers that resemble QR codes around a building with double, uh, double-sided tape, a laser scanner then measures the distance from one marker to the next and records uh, their coordinates. But... Um, uh, let's jump into the main thing. Uh, how it applicable in our context in uh, Ukraine, and what is the solution? Yeah. So uh, as you all know, basically Russia's uh, war against Ukraine continues to to destroy uh, the architectural heritage uh, as well. Uh, for example, let's take uh, the 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 drama theater in uh, in Mariupol, which uh, uh, actually Russia has destroyed um, 
at the very um, the very first month of, of the war now the the Mariupol um, uh, city is um, under under temporary o- occupation and let me just um, add that it was crucial attack uh, because the children yeah uh, was in yeah. capital letters basically the big sign uh, like DT um, it means children in, in Ukrainian uh, like it like it was written uh, uh, close to the entrance uh, to this uh, to this building to and secure civilians yeah and despite the fact uh, that uh, it was quite visible even uh, from space uh, basically russians uh, um, attacked uh, th- this building and uh, uh, of course the building was uh, was de- was damaged significantly and uh, and a lot uh, of casualties a lot of and those children killed. and and people are are dead because of uh, of that of that specific action so uh, again again we are talking about this specific specific drama theater in uh, in Mariupol i think it's important to um, uh, to remind uh, as well that uh, like like before the uh, like before the start of the full scale war uh, Mariupol was uh, was quite a, um, a populated city uh, and uh, its population was about 400 thousands uh, like which is a lot uh, in uh, in terms of Ukraine and uh, and uh, and more importantly the city was also also developing we, uh, like in addition to this uh, theater in Mariupol uh, like like there were some specific cases in terms of um, uh, some buildings in Kiev, uh, for example, on Zelenska Street, where uh, several civilians were killed, and uh, the building is at least 100 years old. And um, uh, let's say the most recent attacks on on uh, the downtown of uh, of Odessa in uh, the south of Ukraine, which is officially um, under UNESCO protection. Uh, so, like, like there are several cases of uh, these uh, uh, crucial, crucial attacks of crucial destruction. But uh, the case of um, of Ukrainian ex- experience also shows that it's possible to save these buildings uh, with the help of the most advanced three modeling techniques so Nastya let's talk more about specifics yeah in Ukraine there was a project uh, fill Ukraine by touch it is a charity project and they had architects um, who make uh, 3D models of seven architectural structures in Lviv so that visually impaired people could imagine what the buildings uh, of their city look like. And they also say like um, like if they take around a thousand pictures and uh, for example set up uh, um, around uh, 30 scanning points uh, uh, like while scanning a, a typical church uh, then uh, for example uh, they say that um, if they are about to scan the uh, Chernisti, for example, university, uh, which is really quite a masterpiece uh, in terms of the uh, the architecture, the building. Uh, it it is quite large. Uh, it's like a campus with church, I, I believe, and uh, they say it will have over uh, twenty thousand pictures and over three thousand scanning points. So. Uh, we should uh, keep in mind that uh, it is uh, it is quite uh, uh, a time cons- a time consuming effort uh, uh, kind of so to speak. So and of course these f- files in terms of scanning are uh, really huge. And uh, for example, they have been scanning this uh, this monument for month, uh, and uh, uh, now they are. Um, um, and now they are working on the on the Chernivtsi Chir- University uh, for f- for quite a long time. At the same time, this group has been scanning other things like like Saint uh, Sophia's Cathedral in Kiev, and um, it hasn't uh, took uh, like a lot of time. But uh, still, it depends on the object. It depends on uh, on the weather, um, of course, and. Uh, 
and, and many, many other factors. And they managed to get all the pictures at the end of September uh, last year. I mean, pictures of the Mariupol Drama Theater, which uh, had been destroyed during the city's bombing. After that, the project Save Mariupol Heritage started a crowdfunding campaign to get a hold of pictures and videos to acquire as much information as possible to build a 3D model of the theater, the area close by and other noteworthy buildings. With the aid of photogrammetry technology, we acquired thousands of photos and constructed uh, a 3D model of Mariupol, the project's initiators say. To scan or not is a personal decision of everyone or the decision of an organization. Uh, but um, however, uh, in times of war, it can be a kind of insurance or investment even of contribution in future reconstruction. Those who listen to us might know that Rubrica is uh, the leading uh, social media oriented outlet. Uh, we got the special structure of, uh, of the articles and um, it, uh, it, it starts um, uh, always with the problem and uh, of course uh, it, um, it follows um, with the solution uh, and uh, speaking about the, the problem um, as a result of uh, Russia's aggression against Ukraine around uh, 20,000 uh, multi-story residential buildings uh, are, are needed um, like uh, in terms of replacement. In Irpin, in Kyiv region, in a uh, uh, small city at the, uh, in the outskirts of Kiev, uh, um, like the city which uh, which basically faced uh, the war among the first uh, cities, uh, nearly three quarters of the entire city was affected. So it's a small city, and uh, around around five hundred uh, apartment buildings were damaged. Uh, um, and uh, uh, of course, like uh, this, the citizens of Irpin, uh, like they were seeking some sort of solutions. And uh, just for you to understand that in Irpin, uh, uh, like the majority of those uh, of those residential buildings are, n- are new, so people spent a great deal of money. Uh, on it and um, their um, state uh, in, in um, I mean the um, I mean the Ukrainian government international organizations charitable foundations and the people living in the, those buildings they uh, have uh, been cooperating uh, with uh, with one another to rebuild and um, uh, in uh, November last year, when uh, when the Russians uh, um, like have been attacking uh, the entire uh, Ukraine uh, to to cut off uh, the Ukrainian the Ukrainian power grid, the Energy Efficiency Fund of Ukraine uh, uh, launched the the Vidnovid Dim uh, program. So it means uh, to to restore your house. And it provides uh, the financing of uh, of works uh, on the restoration of uh, residential buildings, uh, of associations of of co-owners of uh, these buildings. It it called OSBB in Ukraine. Uh, so the um, the program is uh, supported by the European Union. Uh, the EU has allocated around five million uh, euros to the pilot project and. Um, uh, the case of Irpin, of course, uh, shows the importance and uh, the success of, uh, of this kind of project. Well, this is a case when words cannot express what one can see. Because the buildings of Irpin uh, near Kiev were destroyed to the extent that white buildings from the outside were quite dark. And in buildings it was not possible to live. Under this program, condominiums 
can only fix general building parts like the outside roof, plumbing and windows. But it is already a great start and learning experience for the other citizens as well. It gave them hope. It is about restoration in progress even now, uh, of course, amid the war in progress. It is important to understand it, right? So the part of the funding was covered, but not the entire cost. But still, uh, as um, as Nasa just mentioned, um, it is important for people to see uh the at least some movement in in the right uh, direction because um, if uh, not cooperating uh, with the um, uh, the state with the international organizations it's really impossible to to restore um, uh, i would say i would say any of the um, of the major uh, damages in ukraine so all the details about this specific case uh, you can find uh, in the in the in the description we will make sure you uh, you see it um, in the description of the episode but uh, again uh, this uh, particular case is really important because for Ukrainians right now uh, when everyone everyone hears Irpin they all imagine uh, the tragedy, they all imagine uh, death, uh, darkness, uh, uh, the Russian army on the streets, uh, and uh, uh, now there are successful cases of um, at least starting the restoration, and it's really important for uh, for those internally displaced people, even, uh, even uh, inside Ukraine, uh, uh, who see that uh, like um, mm, as an inspiration uh, for the future reconstruction that uh, will uh, will take place uh, after it. Uh, so above mentioned cases prove that um, Ukrainians are seeking for solutions. And you can find more episodes of the podcast at rubrica.com or your favorite podcast provider, Solutions from Ukraine, where we discuss problems and issues from Ukraine and also the people are doing something about them. So please stay with us and remember to support us at patreon.com slash rubrica. Your support helps us produce more independent podcasting and reporting, which will result in more help to Ukraine to win this hot but important war. <laughs>